The first question. Uh, this was a quadratic inequality. So you can see that all you have to do to begin with is a little bit of rearrangement. Get everything over on the left hand side so you can treat that quadratic just as a quadratic on its own. And then from this line to this line, do whatever you need to in order to get this into a factorized form. Uh, you should have a look and you can see 3 times 30 is 90. And you have 13 in the middle. Admittedly, 90 is right up at the ceiling, I'd say, of numbers. I'd expect you to be able to break into factors reasonably quickly. But 5 and 18, you shouldn't be able to, um, shouldn't take you too long to work out that that's the combo that will give you 13. So therefore, you can see I've um, broken apart this guy into two. Do you agree with that? Yeah. And this second line is clearly superior because now with four terms, I can break it apart into pairs and then off I go. Okay? And this is important here. I've factorized, but that's not the solution. In my head, what I've got is, this is a fairly ordinary looking happy parabola, right? So in my head over here, I'd say, okay, it looks something like this, right? What this tells me is where these two points of intersection are over there. One is going to be negative six part of my scale. This one's going to be five over three. The question is asking, when is this parabola less than or equal to zero? So the part that I'm interested in is going to be this part down here. Do you agree? And that's why it's between negative six and five thirds, which is what gives you my inequality. Thumbs up? Yeah? Okay. Let's have a look at this next one. This is just on number, right? I mean, you had to crunch out Pythagoras' theorem. Did I do my numbers right? What do you think? 104? I admit, even I myself, I didn't write this particular quiz. Some of them I did write, but this particular one I didn't. And I looked at that 104 and I looked at it sideways and thought, did I do something wrong? I'm expecting a square number. But I checked it all out. You should have noticed. Uh, these two things here, I know they're messy, right? But you can see number one, if you write it just as a third on its own without the two out the front, then squaring it becomes a little bit easier, right? Uh, secondly, because these two things are actually not just random, they are, starts with a C. Does anyone know what those call, are called? When you've got a plus and then you've got a minus in the middle. We call them conjugates, right? So conjugates come up all the time. We use them in rationalizing denominators and so on. But what you notice is nice about them is that these two terms here, the messy ones, they just cancel out. So you shouldn't have any thirds. Uh, when you get to this line, then you just take the square root of both sides. Okay. So that was the uh, value I got. Okay, now um, run your eyes down this list. Can you read that? Is that big enough to read? Yeah. Now, number one in binomial theorem, and number two when we start to do calculus, which is differentiating and integrating all these things, for later on, this kind of conversion into index form, you've got to be able to do that in your sleep. Seriously. Um, I know some of these get messy later on, but there's really only two tricky things that happen. Um, there are thirds. So for example, the fourth root of a number is that number raised to the power of a quarter, right? So that's where this quarter comes from. And then when you've got things on denominators, it's just that negative index. So what do you think? Did I make any errors? Or are you happy with that? Are there any that you, yeah, Eric? Um, some of us put like, instead of 5 thirds of x and minus 2, for example, c. That one there? Yeah, we put um, minus 5 times, and then in brackets, 3 squared, uh, 3x squared, all to the minus 1. Hmm. Oh, I see. Sorry, you're saying this? Minus 5 outside of 3x squared to the negative 1. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, what I would say is that is not wrong, but it also isn't what the question is asking, right? The a single expressions in index form, you've written that broken apart. Clearly, there's a problem with this part here, right? That the question is, is implying to you, look, you can write that as one thing. And so you should. Uh, just like these questions down here are asking you to combine. I wouldn't accept x times x to the power of a half. That's not a single expression in index form. So apart from that, I, I wouldn't accept. I wouldn't accept that. 
that's what this question is about, being able to manipulate, manipulate and simplify that. So therefore, you're going to be expected to go a little extra. I wouldn't mind... I wouldn't mind this, minus 5x to the minus 2 on 3. I think that's materially identical to this. But I don't think that those two are identical. I think there's a little bit of extra legwork you should put in there. Okay. All right, if I just zoom out, can you see to the bottom? Is that the last one, I? There? Yeah? What do you think? Do you want me to hold on a bit longer as you mark? This is Right. Right. Why not? So, for i, would root x over x work? Root x over x. I mean, it's true, but it's not an index form, is it? <laughs> Any more questions? You got one. Looking okay? You got one. Back. Negative a half. Okay, if you haven't, if you've missed some of those, that's okay. I'll come back to these if you need me to. But let's um, let's move on. Okay. All right. Uh, oops. Here we go. So here we go. This is a simple factorial simplification thing. In fact, there's only only two things that you have to do. If that. So you can see there's a few terms in there that I've thrown in just to see if you can identify which of the ones that matter, which are the important ones. So what I've looked at is the biggest factorials I can find because the biggest ones will give me the most I can cancel. Um, on the denominator, do you see why I've unrolled this just one step? You see why? What, what am I trying to get at? I'm trying to find the n factorial because I can see that on the top. And I know that's the biggest one there because this n minus one factorial like this might be 10 factorial, that would make this 9, right? So it's smaller, it's going to be of less interest to me, okay? So I just unroll this thing on the bottom, uh, the n factorials here and here cancel, and then once you get to there, that's it, full stop, there's nothing else you can do. Okay. 